Just lift your hands everywhere and ask him to fill not only this place but your life. Saturate your life with his presence. Saturate your life with divine revelation. With his power that is able to do. With his power that is able to transform.
10 verse 27 I want us to pray just one prayer before we get to sit down tonight is going to be an amazing night that I can assure you that whatever burden you came here with tonight you are not living with it Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 and it shall come to pass I didn't ask you for amplified translation please New King James or King James King James and it shall come to pass thank you in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed <laughs> because of the anointing you know what even people that don't know they are carrying yokes and burdens and are here tonight will be delivered and set free now my emphasis is the the word or the phrase in that day that means there is a day appointed for your deliverance in that day not every day in that day and the, what what makes it that day or what makes it the day of the deliverance is because that is the day the anointing is available to break every yoke and to set you free I somebody with me this morning this evening the reason why it is the day of your deliverance is because the anointing is present and if you understand the move of God you will know that the, the anointing follows the Word of God the Bible says in Acts chapter 10 verse 44 that while Peter spake these words the Holy Ghost fell on them that were in the house while he spoke tonight we are going to pray and I want you to ask the Lord that as your word is released into my life let the anointing follow suit and break every yoke and destroy every limitation of the kingdom of darkness that has been entrenched in my life to this point in the next three minutes can you lift your voice open your mouth and pray please open your mouth and pray lord send your word into my life and let the anointing follow suit to bring liberation from every form of burden, from every yoke, every entrenchment of darkness that is stationed around my life, every advantage that the enemy has had, let it be brought down. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold must be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You will overcome. You will overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You will overcome. Come and open your mouth and pray. Yokes be broken by the anointing. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. Chains I can't hear you pray. I can't hear you pray. Say it before the book is I can't hear you pray. By the power of the anointing. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Get in the spirit of prayer. Shoto Baraka to Mesia, Kepon Preveso Tere Maha, Sakara Zosimo Setekea, Esombre, Elambri Hamu Samiria, Sabra Damara to Brazil. Shila 
Rakaba Goboros, Sidoboros, Solerho, as darkness trembles in your Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 please when I ask you to pray I want you to pray very well I told you that the first thing that prayer changes is you prayer activates the spiritual dimensions that is inside of you so that you can interface with the revelation of the word of God that is coming the letter kills but the spirit give it life it is prayer that will break through the boundary of your soul the limitation of your soul and give access to the light that comes from the spirit of god and today light will come to somebody in the name of jesus the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them had the light shine the entrance of thy word giveth light and he give it what understanding can you open your mouth and ask him for light to flood your life by the revelation of his word in the name of jesus don't allow your neighbor pray for you please pray
die. Shine in every darkness. Let the fear be destroyed. Let the chains be broken. Let the chains be broken. Let the chains be broken. I the chains falling. I the chains falling. I see your breakthrough coming. Every cloud is rolling. I see your joy coming. I the chains falling. I the chains I see your lifting. It's coming tonight. I see your morning. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every
two to three families that will experience sudden deliverance now as we sing this song Shh, wait 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 and the power of god is going to come on the representative of those families now as we sing this song i saw in the heavens thunder strike and i saw certain things that look like altars destroyed there's sudden deliverance coming to three families now as we sing now it will happen now now lift your hands you are the lord let your name be glorified you are the lord let your name be glorified we give you glory we give you glory and all Chains are breaking now. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. Let your name be Lord. That's it. You are the Lord. Age long chains have been broken. Age long captivity. It's coming to an end now. We give you glory. We give you glory. And honor. And honor. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. I heard the Lord say in my ear, that beast that has ruled over your family that beast 
that spirit that is in form of a beast in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth who died and rose again that beast is dethroned and is falling down now I said it's coming down now we give you glory and oh, let your name be glorified we give you glory and oh, the Lord let your name be glorified we give you glory and honor you are the Lord let your name and hold Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. And holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Tonight is a night of deliverance. Saints and the angels bow. The redeemed worship you now holy 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 are. lord tonight i ask you by the revelation of your word light will outshine every darkness in the life of your children let every satanic encroachment every demonic entrenchment in the lives of your children as they listen right now come on that divine judgment let chains be broken let yokes be destroyed and let your name be glorified let age long battles come to an end today In the name of Jesus Christ, as I speak right now, Lord, I ask, let the ministry of warfaring angels be activated. Let there be battles in the realm of the spirit. And let the adversary be defeated. Let your name be exalted. In Jesus' precious name. Please be seated. God bless you. glory and honor you are the Lord let your name be glorified yes Lord we give you glory Spirit of God. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for your presence across this hall and even online on the airwaves. Thank you. Thank you for the quick work you're doing tonight and that you will do in our midst. Thank you for triumphing on our behalf. Thank you, precious Jesus. Glorify your name today. Glory. 
glorify your name glorify your name glorify your name in all the of everything that we do is that Jesus be glorified that he is seen as king in his splendor and in his glory I'd like us to know that one of the greatest moments when Jesus takes glory is when by the revelation of his word the defeat of the enemy is portrayed for all to see in other words Jesus is glorified when the enemy is subdued and defeated and I'd like you to know that on the cross 2,000 years ago when he died he not only defeated Satan he defeated death and sin and one of the reasons why I love teachings like this on spiritual warfare is not to expose us to or not to glorify the kingdom of darkness because as it were we do a lot of exposition on the system of the kingdom of darkness but the purpose for all of that is not to glorify Satan and his kingdom the end of it is to show you how despite all that he has he has been defeated and subdued and God has given you and I authority to keep him bound and defeated till the day of judgment if you believe that say amen spiritual warfare part two weapons of victory weapons of of victory first john chapter 5 verse 19 welcome once again to pneumatic and i trust both to us here all over this hall and those following online that you will be blessed tonight in the name of jesus and i believe that tonight there will be deliverances I can't hear you. Now, you can't separate completely spiritual warfare from deliverance. There are points where those two topics are, or those two phenomena, or two phenomena are interrelated. And so, I believe that by reason of what we will hear tonight, and by reason of the move of the anointing in this place, there will be deliverance from all kinds of yoke, all kinds of oppression. Many of us are here fighting battles, and we don't even know that we are fighting battles in our lives. But today, every battle that has been existing in your life is going down. And you will stand tall as the victor that you have been created to be in Christ Jesus. There's going to be deliverance tonight. Cycles will be broken. Chains will be broken. 
And I want every one of us to pay attention tonight, open our hearts, open our spirits to what God will do. And also open your mind, open your understanding to hear. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Alright? So your freedom and your liberty which you have in Christ Jesus is best enjoyed when you have access to the truth of his word. So I want you to open your mind as well. Many of us as the teaching goes forth, you will discover that a lot of things happening around your family and your life were orchestrated by satanic intelligence. And we are going to do the way with those intelligences tonight. You are not sounding like this is pneumatic. In the name of Jesus. This is not cinema. This is a service. So don't just watch me. Participate. Amen. So it's good to see every one of us and we are welcome. God bless you. Are we ready tonight? First John chapter 5 verse 19. Let's start from somewhere. I believe that we were blessed last week. Right? Okay. Well, last week was the foundation and just a tip of the iceberg let's go deep into heavier matters today it says we know that we are of god and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one emphasis on the word sway in other words satan has orchestrated a system of intelligence a well-structured system that is at work in our world today capable and even in the business of keeping men bound keeping men oppressed keeping men in all kinds of invisible chains and restraints so that they don't enter into their God-ordained destiny or so that they don't see the light of salvation which is in Christ Jesus with the purpose of eventually being destroyed and condemned with them this system is what we call darkness the reason why we call it the kingdom of darkness is because it is a well structured civilization contrary to popular belief Satan is a very intelligent species very intelligent and has the experience of time he has been living on earth before any human being thousands of years he has studied the cycle of humanity in her functionality in her operation different civilizations that have come and gone he has spent all these years studying the weaknesses of humans so were it not for salvation and what the Bible calls the wisdom of God that was held in a mystery which is appointed for our glory in 1st Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6 and 7 were it not for that provision we are no match for the devil this guy is so wise notice last week we discussed extensively and I was trying to give us the hierarchy of the kingdom of darkness it operates with a well structured hierarchy a well structured organogram of spirits and human agents that have been recruited into the system and that structure has been existing for as long as Satan has been on earth I told you last week as we read from Ephesians chapter 6 the Bible told us in verse 12 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood and that means that as we live in this life we are every day at war with a kingdom that is against the kingdom of God life someone once said is a warfare and not a funfair life is a battle and whether you are aware of it or not whether you do anything about it or not the other side the adversary the bible says goes around seeking whom to devour 
And so the Bible gave us the hierarchy of the operation and the existence of this spirit in the kingdom of darkness. The Bible says first that there are principalities. I'm just doing a recap from last week before we start this week. Now contrary to what many of us has, have believed, many of us when we read that scripture in verse 12, we think that Paul was listing them according to their ranking from the lowest to the highest. But Paul actually started from the highest, that there are first principalities. These are spirits that rebelled alongside with Satan. Satan did not command the angels that rebelled with him to rebel with him. No, he deceived them. You know, when you read the Bible in Revelation chapter 20, the Bible says that he was, and in chapter 12, the Bible calls him the old serpent, the dragon. Yet the Bible didn't say it's a dragon that bites or swallows. The Bible says it's a dragon that deceives. I know you have watched cartoons, you have watched films, and you have always seen dragons that open their mouth and breathe out fire. And I'm going to shock somebody by what I'm going to say now, but it's the truth. And Satan in trying to use, because fear is one of the weapons of Satan against humanity, against the church. He tries to make you believe that he is bigger than whom he really is. Alright? Because the more you believe, the greater your fear will be. So Satan will obviously, has obviously influenced the system of this world. And revealed himself to certain human beings who have fraternized with him as a dragon that breathes out fire but the truth is according to scripture and according to reality there's only one that has command over the supernatural element called fire and that is the king of kings himself Jesus the Bible didn't say Satan had fire in his mouth Huh? The only time that Satan opened his mouth as a dragon in scripture, the Bible says it was water that came out. But the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians that God will bring destruction to the Antichrist and to his false prophets and to the beast. How? By the breath of his mouth. And it's only God you see that it is written in scripture The breath of his nostrils The breath of his mouth The breath of his nostrils The breath of his mouth It is not part of the teaching But I'm just trying to do a lot of exposition So that we can have a true picture Of who we are dealing with If you are with me say amen So Satan used deception To work on the intelligence of all these other spirits Obviously because he had access more Than any other angel to the wisdom that existed in God as a matter of fact I feel that the only wisdom that was kept away from him was the wisdom that orchestrated salvation because the Bible says it was hidden from all the ages the word ages there in the Greek is the word aeon in other words it means worlds w-o-r-l-d-s different worlds of existence and different dispensations of time if you are with me say amen the bible says it was hidden from all of these civilizations and it was appointed for our glory so satan deceived all of these spirits and they rebelled against god and in ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 he, paul begins to by revelation list out to us from the top rank to the least these spirits first he says there are principalities and i told you yesterday how that there are at least four of such principalities that are revealed in scripture now for the purpose of this teaching and because this is not a minister's conference i will not want to go in details to their names you can do your research if you want to if it was a minister's conference i would have gone deeper all right 
and these four principalities are spirits that are covenanted with satan to run the affairs of the dark kingdom and the bible says there are powers there are rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places next week the part three i will do a teaching called confronting or pulling down strongholds then i will expose more to you about the last two rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places and so the bible tells us where we read in first john 5 19 that the whole world is under the sway the deception the masterpiece the control of the evil one he has worked on his structure so well when the bible says that the devil goes about like a roaring lion do you think the bible really means that the devil is walking and patrolling the whole earth talk to me if you are here do you think that's what the bible means are you here i know those that are following online they can hear me when the bible says you know in job let's do a little discourse first in job chapter 1 the bible tells us that the sons of god came to present themselves before god and satan was amongst them and god asked him he said where are you coming from he said from the earth from walking to and through it and then the bible says in first peter chapter 5 and in verse 7 that the adversary our adversary the devil is like a roaring lion isn't it going about sorry verse 8 going about looking for whom he would devour do you think that the bible means satan is literally walking up and down so for instance satan just passed this street now and he's on Dambua road he's walking around no no when satan fell to keep and maintain his authority ah, oh god the mercy okay first of all before i come to that first of all i hope you know that in the kingdom of god when he was still existing as lucifer he had a dual responsibility he had and because of this dual responsibility he had a dual authority okay authority is the position from whence you function in the kingdom power is the ability to function you understand what i'm saying stand you see i don't want to start shouting with the anointing that is there if i preach this thing you will not understand and the purpose for this teaching is for understanding that's why you see me calm like this so satan had dual authority that means he had a position a license to operate certified by god and this position of operation were in two dimensions one was in heaven the other one was on earth when satan fell he lost his authority and his place in heaven but he did not lose his place and authority on earth do you know that because the bible tells us in isaiah that he was ruler of the nations that's his authority that was his position on earth and then in heaven the bible called him lucifer the son of the morning the light bearer isn't it when he fell with the other angels he lost his place in heaven and that's why jude tells you one of those verses in the book of jude he said that angels that did not keep their place their estate he said they fell and a place of torment was reserved for them to the day of judgment that means that when satan fell he fell with several spirits some of those spirits are at work with him now but some of those spirits were captured and kept somewhere because of their increased level of wickedness and god knows that if he allows those spirits on earth humanity will both be deceived and destroyed and I will tell you how they were captured and kept there. So Satan did not lose his authority on earth. That was why when he came to tempt Jesus on the mountain, 
the bible says in one of the temptations he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them in a moment of time and he said all these are in my power to give you until today he has not lost his authority over the world the bible says in second corinthians chapter 4 in whom the god of this world has blinded their mind that's the reason why it is important for you to understand the system of his kingdom so that you can keep him bound subdued and you can have dominion remember the the, 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 the reason why the holy spirit was given it says the lord shall send the rod of your strength out of zion rule thou in the midst of your enemies not outside of your enemies rule in the midst of your enemies so satan is still here in the world but we are supposed to by reason of this intelligence from the word of god subdue him and rule and have dominion while he's still around are, are we together here so the bible tells us here that the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one however last week when i when we were discussing i told us that you know satan fell with angels who are spirits that are working in his kingdom now but then when we listed the category of spirits at work in the kingdom of darkness i also mentioned the category called demons and so before i talk to you today about the weapons of our victory i need to do a little exposition on demons the reason is because we interface more with demonic power and demonic operations in our world today so it is important that we have a background understanding of demon spirits who are they where did they come from how did they exist what are their functions and how can we overcome them mark chapter 16 verse 17 says this sign shall follow them that believe and in my name they shall cast out demons in Ephesians 6 it says we wrestle principalities powers rulers of darkness of this world spiritual wickedness in heavenly places we wrestle with them but in Mark chapter 16 the Bible tells us we cast out demons that means that demons though they are spirits yet they are a different category from all that were listed in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 if you are with me say amen so we need to talk a little about demons we need to understand who demons are all through the ministry of jesus christ he interfaced with the operation of these spirits called demons sometimes you have to cast them out of people before he could heal the people and demons are still at work in the earth today demons are the foot soldiers of the kingdom of darkness they are the ones walking on the earth so when satan said i've been going about going to and fro it's not really that he is walking to and fro no he has a system of foot soldiers called demons operating in all the seven continents in the world ensuring that his will and his plan and his plans as revealed by principalities and as executed at, by powers ensuring that these plans and purposes are effective in all the places of the world in different time zones at the same time so because satan has demons everywhere walking to serve his will in a way he is imitating the kingdom of god because god is omnipresent he's everywhere at the same time and satan knew that if he must have dominion on earth he has to copy a system that carries that level of authority and power and so when satan fell he copied the very system of the kingdom of god he did copy and paste exactly because just the way you have demonic principalities you have angelic principalities are you with me here i hope i'm talking to the right audience He knows that God is the only omnipresent one. And so Satan's business 
It's not to try to dethrone God. He can't. All he wants to do is appear as another option apart from God to the human race. To appear equal to God before human beings. So that humans will be able to choose him above God. Why? Because human beings were created as free moral agents. They were created with free will. And it is by an act of your will that you release the dominion that has been assigned to you by God in his kingdom. It is by the decisions you make that you release the power that God has given to you to rule. In other words, the workings of the spirit of God or demons in your life is based on the decisions of your will. It is by your will. That's why it's called will. You know, when a man dies, he writes a will before he dies and he bequeaths his property to different people so every time you make decisions you are writing your will and bequeathing your authority to the spirits that are behind those decisions so if you make a will to sin who have you given authority to satan and the bible says he will operate by what the bible calls the law of sin and death keep you bound so satan wanting to be omnipresent everywhere and ensuring that his work is going on on earth without hindrance or interruption he has these foot soldiers in his kingdom servant spirits they are called demons and i want us to discuss a little about who they are before we talk about the weapons of our victory and then we we'll pray are we ready tonight all right let's go to the bible genesis chapter 6 verse 1 to 4 Oh, first of all, Matthew 13. Before you go to Genesis, Matthew 13. Matthew chapter 13. From verse 24 to 30. Jesus gave a parable. And I want to show you something here. Another parable he put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. All of these parables were to explain and describe vividly the systems and the operations of the kingdom of heaven. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tars among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tars also appeared. So two kinds of plants here. And so the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tars? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. But both, let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First, gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to bury them but gather the wheat into my barn verse 36 to verse 39 of the same chapter gives us the interpretation of this parable then jesus sent the multitude away and went to the house and his disciples came to him saying explain to us the parable of the tares of the field so it was to his disciples he explained exactly what he was talking about and he answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. Go on, please. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of who? And the sons of who? Who do you think those sons are? Just hold on. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. The word son there in the original rendition can also be interpreted to mean seed. So when he says the sons of the kingdom, he says the seed of the kingdom. When he says the sons of the wicked one, it means the seed of the wicked one. Of course, you know, literally, it doesn't mean that Satan carried corn and planted. No. 
it's talking about the seed of the devil now the devil is a spirit just in case you think that only human beings have seed biologically only men carry seed in them biologically and can reproduce the bible says the devil had a seed and the bible called them the seed of the wicked one so the question is this seed of the devil of course a son will look like his father a son is the expression of his father a son is the very reality of his father and so if we are sons of god because we have been born again and we are begotten after his kind then it means that the sons of the wicked one have been born of the wicked one and they are after his kind in other words these are species that are like the devil in existence in operation and in function sadly many christians don't know this and another sad thing is that they don't know that these seed are in our world today that means not everybody you see is a seed created by god so let's look at who this seed are genesis chapter 6 verse 1 to 4 now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them that the sons of god saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took and they took wives for themselves of all whom they choose and the lord said my spirit shall not strive with man forever for he is indeed flesh yet his days shall be 120 years there were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of god came into the daughters of men and they brought children to them those were the mighty men who were of men of old men of renown so the bible speaks about the sons of god the sons of god here are not angels because the bible says in the book of matthew jesus was giving a parable when they came to ask him the question you remember when the pharisees came to him and told him master this woman here married one of us and the husband died and the brother married and died and the other brother married and there were seven of them that got married and died without any seed with the woman and they said master when we get to heaven and we are resurrected in heaven he said who shall be the woman's husband and jesus told them none of them he said because we shall be like the angels in heaven the phrase note the phrase angels in heaven angels in heaven not just angels angels in heaven he said we shall be like the angels in heaven how are they he said they, they neither marry or, or they give to marry so if this scripture was talking about the angels the holy angels of god then jesus would have been wrong and jesus cannot be wrong because he's the word of god so the sons of god here was not talking about angels from the kingdom of god the sons of god here is in the hebrew benai adonai it means descendants of elohim descendants of the lord god the word elohim is a compound word in the hebrew is a word that represents every spiritual species for he makes his angels what you guys are not talking to me let's pray let's do small miracle service I, that's what you want Nashi. that word elohim is for every spirit and of course god himself is spirit and he created his angels that will serve him in his kingdom as what spirit so elohim means every celestial being but in this context of genesis chapter 6 by this time satan had fallen i hope you know and he fell with angels and the word fall there is not only that they fell from heaven alone it's not only that they fell from a height the word fall also means that they lost their original form of existence they were supposed to exist as holy angels but when they rebelled against god they lost that glory 
and they were subjected to a lesser glory that's why we call them fallen angels now these fallen angels were the ones because they were hovering over the earth and the heavens and of course the bible has been clear to show us that angels have bodies i don't have time to prove it to you so they came on earth and they saw the daughters of men and the bible says they took them for wives they met with these women had intercourse with them and the seed of these fallen angels came in these women and the bible says in verse 4 that the women gave birth to a species that were called giants in the hebrew they are called nephilim in other words men of stature a, a group of people a a a, a colony of species that look not like the normal human beings a descendant that was not created by God why because they were the seed of fallen angels and now God became angry because this seed multiplied wickedness on the earth of course they were wicked because they were the seed of the evil one and God said he was going to destroy all life not the earth that was what brought the flood of Noah he said he was going to destroy all life all flesh not the earth and so eventually the flood came and destroyed every one of them and the Bible says in James I believe chapter 2 that as the body without spirit is what dead, so faith without work is what dead. so when the flood came and destroyed all life on earth these species they died and their spirit remained the spirits could not go to heaven because they have been thrown down from heaven they could not go to hell because their time for condemnation had not come these were the seed of fallen angels and so when noah came out of the ark and God told him multiply and fill the earth again when the human race started again these spirits became restless because they needed a body to dwell and stay on the earth remember that the sons of God came on earth isn't it so they knew that their jurisdiction had to be on earth so they had to look for human bodies that they would possess and be in these spirits are called disembodied spirits in other words there are you they are real persons but they are not human beings they can talk they can feel they can see they can smell they can move they have every motion that a human being has but they don't have a body these spirits brothers and sisters are what we call demons somebody say demons so that's how demons came on the earth and they are still here today The Bible tells us that even in Canaan, when the children of Israel were to cross into the land of Canaan, the Bible says that there were certain of them that were called sons of Anak. They were giants, men with six fingers and six toes. These were these the spirits had possessed the same way that the fallen angels came into the the women and they conceived and bore this species was the same way they replicated themselves again. Now, if you don't believe, this is the, this is the phenomenon we call incarnation. If you don't believe it, then that means the coming of Jesus was false. Because it was the same way Jesus was born. He said, how shall this thing be? He said, the spirit of God shall come upon thee, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee. And what shall be conceived in thee shall be called a holy child. So the same way Jesus was born was the same way these spirits came on the earth only that jesus was of the holy spirit and the virgin mary that means that demons can give pregnancy <laughs> oh it's making sense to you now okay let me ask you a question a woman gets married let me say this as part of the practical experiences I have had little in the ministry of deliverance. A woman gets married and for a while doesn't have children. And the man is okay, the woman is okay. 
and then soon afterwards she will go to sleep and begin to see strange dreams people coming to meet her and sleep with her in the dream eventually they pray to god and the husband meets the woman and she conceives and one day with her conception in its very little you know infant stage she goes to sleep she has a dream somebody comes and has intercourse with her and six months later she is having pains she's supposed to be six months pregnant by now isn't it and she goes for scan and they tell her there is a baby in your womb and fibroid question is how did that fibroid enter that womb to grow that's demonic technology that's the seed of spirits demon spirits so don't think that all children everybody that is born comes from god no i'm telling you this is an intelligence that's still at work today that's why in witchcraft and in occultism a native doctor that has grown to some levels and mastered the art of sorcery and knows how to use the powers of the second heaven can also make a woman conceive all he needs to do is beckon to those spirits come into covenant with them and because he's a human being and the bible says the heavens of heaven belong to god but the earth has he given to the sons of men so the only way that these spirits can come on earth is when men give them access just the way those women gave them access into their life and so this native doctor can beckon on those spirits come into a covenant and a league with them and through his authority as a man they have access into the life of this woman and she conceived and we think that all children are from god welcome to the operation of darkness you see there's no technology in this world though there's no technology here there's nothing here anything you are seeing here now is nothing compared to what is existing in that realm they are light years ahead you know what i call light a light year is several millions of years calendar years together all of this artificial technology artificial intelligence all these things you see they they were they were discovered and brought into our world from another realm let me even digress a little some look at some of the cars that they design now stand and look at some of the cars from the front you see it look like a dog some of the other cars you see it look like a snake like a python there's one toyota that looks like that with all apologies to toyota brand <laughs> it's because i was telling somebody i say you don't learn how to cook by watching youtube you know why because the person did all the video and that video was edited behind the scenes you don't know what she added that's the reason why you copied everything but you you, you instead of doing pancake you discovered another thing <laughs> please be seated instead of pancake what you discovered was pan wafers And so some of these technology industries you don't know the spirits they are covenanted to where they get the designs for some of these products they are interacting with another world it is better you believe it now not to be afraid but believe it for your awareness because we are interfacing with that world of demon spirits and we are in the last days where there's going to be a heightened operation of these spirits you are going to see them roll out all kinds of technology now you just heard it from my mouth that demons too can produce pregnancy if demons can give pregnancy they can also give money are you hearing what i'm saying you so this is how these spirits came on earth disembodied spirits until today they are looking for a place to dwell several of them the bible tells us that in the ministry of jesus 
he interfaced with them again and again there was a time he met a man when he crossed the lake to the other side and this man had demons in him one of them began to talk for the others and he said we are legion the word legion means five to six thousand troops soldiers that means that there were about five to six at least five to six thousand demons but this one was the chiefest of them speaking on their behalf demons let me give you six seven to eight things about demons number one i've just explained the origin to you i need to explain the operation demons entice demons entice demons entice the bible says when a man is tempted he should not say he's tempted of god for every man that is tempted is tempted because they are drawn away by their lust that's the book of james chapter one the bible tells us this word lust means desire strong desire every human being has desire desire for something so for these demons to have access into the life of a human being because as long as they exist outside of a human body they are restless and they are in torment so for them to solve their restlessness they need to enter into a body whether it is a body of a full-grown man or the body of a baby in the womb and it's true they can enter into the baby of a womb that's why a pregnant woman should be more prayerful i advise you fathers pastor henry your wife just gave birth now young men that want to get married when your wife become pregnant be be if if it is possible be anointing that stomach every night lay your hands on it and be praying because the bible tells us in ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 5 it says, just the way you don't know how a spirit enters the womb of a woman he says so you don't know the mysterious works of god so they can enter the life and the body of a full-grown man they can enter the life and the body of a baby in the womb grow with that baby become a person with that baby take hold of the mind and the faculties of that human being and then make that person give them expression demons entice what does it mean to entice to try to lure you into sin that's what they do have you ever been somewhere before and all of a sudden while you were seated there you were even speaking in tongues and just enjoying yourself or maybe listening to music as a young man a public place and all of a sudden a fair damsel walk by past you and then all of a sudden something in you is zooming your eye to the spaghetti top that she's wearing and you discover that a part of her breast is showing and this is you speaking in tongues this is you listening to Theophilus Sunday this is you vibrating there but all of a sudden you can't take your eye from there that's the work of a demon you have been enticed and it's working on the strength of your lust now the power of that demon will only end there until you take a step of faith in this wise it's, the faith is negative now in this wise you take a step of faith and advance towards the lady as soon as you do that and get into sin that's when the devil comes in demons entice everywhere they entice satan doesn't know how to get you so he needs to show you all kinds of products show you everything for some people it's car they were just sitting at home one day or they were passing by and they saw somebody driving what's that corolla that has very small eyes headlamps huh what's that corolla what you guys are pretending here you you people eh? spider now wow spider and then you were just walking on the street and you saw somebody drive with that spider with alloy wheels and all of a sudden you began to feel like you are not doing enough you too need to get that car and that's how you entered yahoo yahoo 419 you were enticed somebody say enticed demons enticed number two demons seduce the bible speaks of seducing spirits in first timothy chapter 4 it says in the latter days some would depart from the faith 
and they will give heed to seducing spirit. Demons harass. Number three. Demons harass. What does it mean to harass a man? To make that man restless. Now let me tell you something. Demons can possess an unbeliever bodily but cannot possess a believer. However, they can harass a believer. Believers and unbelievers can be harassed by demons. Demons harass people through affliction. They harass people in dreams. You call it dreams, but let me just tell you the truth. That's the spirit world. Huh? That's why when you watch films like Avatar, what do you think they are talking about there? You, are, are we here? That's what they call it in Avatar. The person just goes and they pluck something and he's in another world. He's sleeping here, but he's in another world. <laughs> and then you wake up and say, it's just a dream. It's not a dream. Oh. It's not just a dream. It was real. It happened. It transpired. Transactions happen. Every time a breakthrough is about to come for you, you will dream and see yourself looking for something that you cannot find. Or you'll see yourself farming with hope. And you have just applied for the job. You passed the interview. They told you we will call you back because you were the best. And then the demon said, no way, you can't get it. We need to harass this guy's destiny. So they transport you by reason of demonic technology in your dream back to the village. What is the connection between a farmer and an engineer? So they have exchanged your destiny. So your certificate there to those board members, what they end they see, they are looking at the farmer. And that's how you miss the job. Somebody say harass. In my little time I've seen, I've, I've, I've been with people, they come to see you, they are calm. They walk with on, put pancake, and all of a sudden they begin to scatter the whole place. One time I was praying for a lady in my house and she, calm lady, calm lady, I don't know if she's here now, if she's delivered now. She came very calm. If I, she's talking, you have to listen very well to her, to hear her. As soon as I said in the name of Jesus and we began to pray, she carried my chairs and threw them. You know those my chairs? I'm telling you. I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you real, real story. Demons oppress. Oppression, this one works more in the mind. When a demon enters a man, the first thing he does is go straight to the mind of that man. Because the mind is the organ for expression. The mind is where yourself is. That's your soul. That's the part of you that interacts through your body. So they go to that mind and they reconfigure your system of intelligence to suit their own character. So that even if they are casted out, you will still behave in a way that is like them. That's why Jesus said when the demon spirit is casted out, it will go through dry places seeking rest. And when he does not find the rest, it will come back to his house. Demonic programming. Somebody said demonic programming. It's very true. There are many people right now, even in church, who have been reprogrammed in their mind. In whom the God of this world has blinded their minds. So you see the person behaving like another thing. His configuration has been distorted. It's just the way NEPA, NEPA, or you know what do they call them now? The electricity distribution company. They have their poles everywhere and they connected light to your house. And then you didn't pay your bills for two years. And they came and disconnected your wire. And then you know an electrician in your neighborhood who when you call him in the night with a touchlight phone, he can climb the ladder just like the NEPA people and connect it back. But that's illegal connection. That's what demons do in the mind of people. There are demons that are specialized. They are, they are specialized with causing war and bloodshed. When they invade a territory, all of a sudden people begin to kill one another. A brother will carry a gun and shoot his own brother. That's not ordinary. They have been oppressed. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 7 in King James translation. It says, surely oppression driveth a man mad. That's why I believe every kind of psychological or psychiatric symptom or condition is demonic. It has demonic undertone. 
medical people may not want to agree they'll tell you it's a psychological this psychosomatic stress disorder this and that and all of that and you know the way they are doctors and nurses do psychiatric doctors and nurses all the way they do around their patients sometimes they behave like the patient they try to make the patient feel that he's special and that he's okay meanwhile he's mad that's a demon here you go there one day and say in the name of jesus and watch what happens anyone that is under oppression this night you will be free in the name of jesus oppression some people their oppression is that they can't sleep once they close their eyes all kinds of dreams that's why in these days eh, as a believer you need to carry the anointing oh. i don't care what profession you are into you need to carry power are you hearing what i'm telling you you need to carry the anointing you say i'm a military man i'm not doing ministry i don't have any business one day when you are addressing your men somebody will fall and begin to act funny that day get up will not work oh. get up will not work you need the anointing to bring deliverance demons oppress demons enslave demons enslave that's the work of demons that's the work of satan to keep you perpetually bound as a slave so you serve the purpose of that demon through the lust by which he was invited into your life that's what we call addiction isn't it uh-huh demons compel they can compel people they can compel you to go and touch the lady's waist you are passing the kitchen and they are frying akara you passed it three times but the fourth time when you were passing all of a sudden you just entered the kitchen and took some and put it in your you were compelled don't tell me it's god you were compelled i'm telling you people are compelled to do all kinds of things people are compelled to commit suicide a demon will say kill yourself <laughs> i've prayed for people like that they will, be, they will be saying, I want to die. The next time they look at their ceiling fan, they are just seeing how they can tie rope there. Even to pastors. I know one like that many years ago. I know one like that. Was very frustrated about life. The devil had driven him. And you know, you know the way the devil drives many of us crazy? It makes you begin to compare yourself with other people. You don't have car like them. You don't have house like them. You have been serving God. Nothing is happening. And all of a sudden, you have entered into a mental state that you don't understand. You begin to feel frustrated as though God has forsaken you. As though God will not do what he has said he will do. As though this God thing is even fake. Then the demons begin to speak to you. Say, all these things are useless. So they are not real. Forget all these pastors. Better go and join them and do what they can do. Are you not a beautiful lady? how much that you are here suffering from hunger in fact you even hear some of them say it's not like i don't know what to do that what you that what you want to do you are compelled by a spirit to do it and this pastor went and sold his television sold the television and used the money to buy a rope to do what to hang himself it was when he was leaving the shop with the rope that he met a friend of his that saw him and held him and that was how he was saved demons compel demons torment demons torment and demons can also destroy there are many people living under the torments of the devil how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healed all who were what oppressed of the devil that's it that's a version of being tormented they can destroy they can plan accidents to wipe out an entire family they can plan bloodshed they don't care who wins you know human beings when we are fighting war is about who wins and who loses demons don't care everybody just dies so that they can have blood 
they destroy they have wrecked and destroyed houses families homes territories nations countries sometimes a plague just breaks out in a community and in just one month kills thousands of people that's the operation of demons that's what we need to know and I'm, I, I, like I, so I told you I'm not magnifying the work of the devil because I want to give him glory no I need us to hear these things so that we can understand the operations of the foot soldiers of darkness and become annoyed this night so that when we begin to pray your prayer should search out into your life and family every entrenchment of the enemy some of you don't know that some of the things that your family members are going through are demonically sponsored They have kept a system that keeps men enslaved and keeps men bound and destroyed. And this night, something aggressive must awaken in your spirit to say enough, enough is for the devil. The end has come for the operation and the work of demons. As far as you live this life as a believer, you will encounter them every day. There is no family on earth that I know that doesn't have some form of demonic attachment to it. Because they must fulfill the work of Satan. Yet the Bible says, In my name you shall cast out demons. Yet the Bible says, Behold, I give unto you power, authority to tread upon snakes and serpents, uh, serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So, regardless of the fact that we have mentioned all that demons can do and that they are so powerful and mighty the bible says it is possible when a believer has the right understanding and knowledge it is possible to expel them you know i didn't tell you another bad side of the whole equation i didn't tell you that demons can be tormented did i tell you demons can be tormented too they are tormented when you cast them out or when they are expelled every time a demon is casted out of an individual or out of a family because it's not only staying in the body of a man it can also stay within a family remember that spirit said my house in matthew chapter 12 he says in verse 43 to 45 he said i shall return to my house and jesus said in verse 45 he says so shall it be to this wicked generation that means demons can stay in family lines not only in human bodies they can stay within the family seeking to enslave everybody but it is possible with the required light to bring expulsion to that devil to bring expulsion and exorcism to that demon and the moment a demon spirit is casted out they are already under torment that's why when they are, when a man is experiencing deliverance you see the demons crying so well in that person you know why because as they leave that body they are being tormented they said to Jesus, have you come to torment us before our time? So it is possible to torment them. And brothers and sisters, we must be angry this night to obtain the grace and the anointing to step into our God-ordained mandate to exorcising demons and keeping them under torment. That means they can be tormented till the day of judgment. So he says, I give unto you power. So there are weapons, the Bible says, of our warfare by which we can wage war against this spirit and defeat them. And I want to show you four of them and we'll pray. Number one, what are the weapons that make for our victory? These are spiritual strategies. This is an intelligence from the kingdom of God. There's somebody here with a demon. And you'll be free today. In the name of Jesus. You'll be free today. In the name of Jesus. This is the understanding that gives helps us to secure the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. Number one. What are those weapons? Number one, knowledge of God's word. Knowledge of God's word. Knowledge of God's word. Your first weapon against the kingdom of darkness. Your first offense 
that you can arm yourself with against the powers of hell and secure your victory that has been made available for you number one is the knowledge of the word of god first john chapter 2 verse 15 verse 14 rather he says i write unto you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning i have written to you young men because you are strong and the word of god abides in you read together this part of the verse at the count of three one two three and you have overcome who the wicked one you have overcome who the wicked one how he says you are strong for the word of god abides in you any believer without the knowledge of the word of god is still within the reach and the dominion of demons and the spirits of darkness you must know the word of god the word of god is your access to the victory that has been made available for you in christ jesus it is the word of god inside of you the bible says not just to know it alone but that it will abide in you that means you come to a point where by reading and by studying the word of god has become a part of your system a part of your intelligence the bible says be not conformed to the standards of this world so this world has a system by which it indoctrinates and and and, 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 and reconfigures the minds of men so that they can function and operate according to the intelligence and civilization of Satan. He says, but be not conformed to the standards of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The system for that transformation is the word of God. But today, you know the problem in the church? We don't like the word of God. Even young ministers don't read their Bible. The devil has replaced it with WhatsApp, replaced it with social media, because he knows that for the young men to be strong and overcome, the Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. It was not only referring to Jesus alone, that can also become your reality. That the written word becomes a revealed word to you. It brings life to you. The entrance of that word giveth light and understanding to the simple. The re revealed word can become a manifested word in your life. You become the expression of that word. And then you move from that dimension to becoming the sent word. In other words, by reason of your intercourse with the word of God, you now understand whom God is. You understand his power. You understand the authority you have in Jesus Christ. You know who and whom you are in Christ. And you have the authority inside of you. Faith cometh how? By hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Your number one weapon of victory is the word of God. Satan is not scared of the word of God you know. He's scared that you know the word of God. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Satan is not scared of the word of God you know. Satan is scared that you know the word of God. Why? Because when you know God's word, that word transforms you and makes you the fulfillment of what he says. For instance, psalms 107 verse 20 says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction when a man meditates on that word a time will come when he will intercourse with the anointing behind that word and his life now becomes the expression of that scripture in other words when he says he sent his word it's not that man talking now but that man has become the sent word of god that anywhere he appears he brings deliverance and healing how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. He knew that he was anointed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He read that scripture till it became part of him. You remember the Bible said so that he took the scroll of Isaiah and he opened to where it was written. That means he has read it before. He has meditated on it before. Whose delight is in the word of God and in it he meditates day and night. And therefore he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water who brings forth his fruit in season whose leaves do not fade and whatever he does shall prosper so who cares about the economy of nigeria whatever he does 
prosper. And Isaac sowed in that land in a season of famine. But because he knew the word, he knew the promise. For the promise of God, 2 Corinthians 1 20. I yea and in him, amen. For God is not a man that he should write. Numbers 23 verse 19. Neither the son of man that he repents of his word. As he said, he shall he not do it. As he command, uh, spoken, he shall he not command it to be so. Isaac knew the promise that God said, This is the land I've given to you and your father and to your seed. And in the time of famine, he knew what he knew and sold in that land. And God blessed him. What do you know? What do you know? What do you know? When you see me stand here and say the fire of God is going to come on people and you see it coming on people, do you know I can take you to a systematic study in the word of God to route you to that mystery that that fire is operational in a realm in heaven and because of my knowledge from scripture of the route to that realm I can make demands and it will show up that's why Elijah told them the God that answers by fire he knew the route but we don't know the word of God Especially I weep when I see young ministers in our time. Everybody wants to be on social media. Everybody wants to be known and have followers. You can have thousands of followers on social media and you are still oppressed by demons in the night. But you know what? When the light of the word of God lands on your life, eh? it will announce you from where you are to the nations. You don't need publicity. What did he say about John the Baptist? strange man strange lifestyle he was in the wilderness and all israel and judea gathered to him in the time when there was no signboard no billboard no poster no social media no whatsapp status there was something in you that spoke to the spirits and compelled men to gather to him even the devil know that if i keep if i allow this guy to stay alive him and jesus i'm in trouble so Herodias, look for his head. What did Elisha know? That even when he died, his body had, had the, the, what he knew had materialized into his body. And the Bible says a dead man touched the bones of Elijah. And he stood up and lived. Do you know that you can so know the mysteries of the word of God that your pre it's no longer that you need to say your presence now attracts the same power, the same grace. Those of you that have had encounters with spirit, you know that in the realm of the spirit, you don't need to open your mouth to talk. In fact, not all spirits have mouth. <laughs> A spirit can think to you and because of the energy backing their thoughts it will force you to listen to what they are saying from their thoughts do you think Paul was crazy when he says that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think is a reality in another realm the knowledge of the Word of God I write to you young men because you are strong that thing you call a limitation is a limitation because you have not experienced light from the word of God that will like shine that darkness, that will surmount that limitation. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, because of what he knows, thou shalt be as flat as a plain. So someone's limitation, because of another man's knowledge of the word of God, it will become a stepping stone. What do you know? Can I talk to every young minister under the sound of my voice? Can I appeal to you, whether you are listening online or you are here, take time to school yourself in the word of God. Whether you are doing, whether you are a preacher or not, sit on that word. It was from here, yeah, God taught me the mystery of sound and the anointing. Here, yeah, I can teach you. It's a curriculum I can show you and you can forever route that anointing. It's here. And now we just want to sing and <laughs> we are... Well, I don't want to be a Facebook preacher. I, do, I want to be as popular on earth as I am in heaven. There's a man called Reverend Dr. Omar Pai, still alive, one of the great generals of God in, this, in the gospel in Nigeria here. And it was told him, he went to preach in a crusade in Ebony State. 
and they told him not to come a pastor told him don't come why a particular cult group they are ganged up together and said they will kill him and he stubbornly went there and when he got to the crusade ground the pastor said why are you stubborn why did you come these guys they are everywhere they are even under the podium they are under the stage where you are they are just waiting for you to climb and then they will lynch you he said okay let them come he said there were about 250 of them just for one man Abba but that's not the end of the story he stood on stage this was opening prayer he said father let all those court boys wherever they are let them fall down and go to sleep now and when they sleep let them have visions of hell hell fire and when they have the vision let them wake up from their sleep and give their life to Christ and among them raise preachers and almost instantly 250 people fell asleep and when they woke up they all gave their life to Christ he said three years ago some of them came and brought a seat to him what you know somebody say what do you know there's something you know that lack will no longer be an issue in your life some of you see the way I send you text message when you say I should pray and I send the text as though it's, it's so authoritative as though the devil is going to live right there it's because of what I know he sent his word is it not called message don't you send it uh -huh. so you want me to call you and pray but I can send the word the word will navigate all the billions of waves look for your phone and the moment you read that text message the word comes alive enters your body it has intelligence in itself to go to where that cancer is and dry it up completely somebody shall power what you know what you know that's why they say knowledge is power can you pray in the spirit for one minute lord in this season open my eyes there is more that i need to know there is more that i need to know to step into my dominion my god ordained mandate of dominion and authority there is so much more he said you have dwelt too long on this mountain he said go from hence and turn not war joshua thought he had defeated all the nations but god told him at his old age he said you are now old but there is yet more land to conquer lord open my eyes are you praying open my eyes in this season that obstacle can be crushed once and for all if only you know that which has been made available for you if only you know the power that is at work within you hallelujah let's finish up number two weapons of our victory number two the power of decrease somebody said decrease shout it again decrease the power of decrease many christians don't know you see let me tell you something if you have ever been in a deliverance scene and the person the demon in the person is manifesting most of what they will always do in church is that they will gather people around and begin to pray isn't it isn't it in my interest or in my knowledge that is the wrongest thing to do at that time that prayer should be done somewhere in fact when jesus started teaching about prayer one of the things he told us was the strength of prayer was in its secrecy shut yourself in the secret and pray and to your father in heaven and he that sees in secret shall reward where in open prayer helps you to propel and to gather spiritual energy but it is a decree issued that will propel that energy and convert it to power energy is the ability the potential to do work but power is the work that is done based on the particular time that's the wrongest thing to do 
what should be done there is one person who knows who he is in Christ Jesus and who, are, who is filled with the Holy Ghost to just stand there and issue one statement get out in the name of Jesus and that's the end but you know what we do? We just gather there and, yeah, 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 yeah. and then the demon, the demon says, okay, let's just play with these people small. Then the, the person will fall down and see if he has gone. Then they say, ah, thank you, Jesus. Then the demon will stand again. Hey! Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. After three hours, they are tired. I had the story of a, a, a man, a white man. In, they said in Redeem Camp, a group of people, pastors, were trying to cast out the demon. They were doing that. And the white man was there on the camp for retreat. And he was eating banana. You know the way they fast now, white people. You know, it's we in Nigeria that will fast dry. The white man will tell you I'm fasting, you're holding juice like this. Praise the Lord. My dad told me many years ago, they went to a mountain in Calabar to fast with some foreigners. And they saw them with juice. They said, ah, What are you doing? They said, No, 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 we are, we are on the mountain. We're, we're, we're praying, we're fasting. Amen. And the white man was eating banana. And he saw what they were doing. And after a while, he was disturbed. And he just walked to where they were. And met, went, went to, straight to the demoniac. Say, in the name of Jesus, come out of him and enter him no more. And walked away. And as he was walking, the person fell and the demon left. Decrease. He said, you shall decree a thing. And it shall be established. And the light shall shine on your path. Job 22, 28. Psalms 2 verse 7. He said, I will declare the decree. What is the decree? Psalms 107 verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What would they say? Whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. The decree is that which has been written in the word concerning you. You must learn to issue a declaration of that decree. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 4. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Not where the prayer of a king is. No. Satan is not scared of a prayer. He has seen many more prayer people like you than you. He has seen John Knox. He was alive. He was there when John Knox was alive. All the prayer warriors you knew in every dispensation died and left. He's still around. So if you think that your six hours prayer is making him scared, nothing like that. What he is afraid of is in that prayer that you encounter light. And then when you encounter another understanding that makes you know that that which you have gathered in prayer can be released to become a reality through your words. Every time we make decrees, we step into the reality of our being the God's kind. He created the earth by a spoken word. Learn to issue decrees. When there are satanic entrenchments in your family, demonic galvanization, learn to issue a word with power and authority. Listen, spirits, spirits only respect decrees. Now can I tell you one advantage we have over Satan? Satan is not a king. He's a prince. The Bible calls him the prince of the power of the air. A prince is a king without territory. He doesn't have right over any place. He has right over the systems of this world. But he doesn't have right over the earth that the world inhabits. But the Bible tells us in Revelation 1 verse 6, Revelation 5 verse 10, And has made us unto our God kings and priests. That's why he didn't say where the word of a prince is. Where the word of a king is. He said, rule thou in the midst. Somebody after this night needs to stand up and make a declaration over your family against witchcraft. Somebody needs to stand up and make a declaration over poverty and say, thus far have you come and thus further shall you not go. One decree is enough to set a boundary between your family and that affliction. One is enough. All these years of prayer, when will you arise and take authority? He said, I'm a man under authority. I say to one, go and he goes. And to another, come and he comes. He said, I also know because of that, you, Jesus, you are a man under the authority of the supreme God. And because of that, when you speak demons, 
Did you ever see Jesus pray when he was healing the sick or casting out demons? He never prayed. All through scripture, Jesus never prayed when he was healing the sick and casting out demons. Today we pray in miracle services so that your faith can agree with us to know that we are praying. Otherwise, by spiritual intelligence, I can stand here without talking and command an affliction to leave somebody's body and it will go. But you will not know, so you will not be able to participate. That's why we pray. But Jesus never prayed against sickness. What did he say to the sick? Be healed. What did he say to the lepers? Be cleansed. What did he say to the oppressed? Come out of him. If he wants to be merciful, he will add, enter into him no more. It's as if Jesus measured his words. Peter said, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come. That's a long sentence. Jesus said, come. He went to the grave of a dead man. Now, some of us, that's why when you get there, you say, no, let's charge ourselves for five hours first. Let's charge. Let's charge. Jesus went there. This is what you call prayer for a dead man. Dead for four days. Father, I thank you because you have always heard me. And for their sake, hear me again so that they will know that you sent me. That, that looks like a prayer of arrogance. But don't mistaken confidence for pride. Oh, there's some when you know that your words carry power you speak over situations and they change you speak to death and life will come from the dead you speak to someone's finance and it comes out of penury and poverty into abundance was it not the word of a prophet a prophet who was not born again that turned the captivity of an, an entire city for three months in one day i hope you know elisha was not born again elijah was not born again Moses was not born again. That's why they appeared on the mountain to see Jesus. Jesus told them in John chapter 8, Abraham your father saw my day and he was glad. They knew that the ushering of the New Testament church was going to be a species of people that will enjoy that which they dream to look upon. But we are the ones now under using the power. How many of you are ready to make decrees over the powers of darkness around your life? Some of you, do you know that the cycle of lack around your life is demonic do you know that the always failing exam is demonic any pattern you see that is not of god is demonically sponsored it will take the decree of a king a higher priesthood that's why he's a priest and a king at the same time to counter it are we ready to pray this night number three the blood of jesus that's another weapon the blood of Jesus. Revelations 12, I believe in verse 10 or 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Somebody say the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is perhaps, perhaps, one of the most powerful strategies to use in deliverance. Such that, Let, if, if, if you have gotten to your wit's end or you have gotten to the last straw and you know how to use the blood of Jesus even demonic attachments that are based on satanic covenants will be broken the Bible says it is the blood that speaketh better things which blood speaks other than the blood of Jesus it is the blood that speaks your righteousness against the accusation of the enemy it is the blood that tells the enemy that regardless of the fact that he has sin, Jesus died on his behalf years ago and took his sin on himself. So take your accusation and your hand off his life. Somebody say the blood. You know some of us go to churches where they take communions, they believe in com the communion, the power of the communion, a lot of that. If you understand the power that is in the blood of Jesus, you can bring an end to age-long covenants in your family. It was entered into by a man with blood. It can be broken by another man with blood. But you don't have to shed blood. You only have to call upon the blood that was shed. Every blood shed spreads, spreads on the ground and is dried up. 
but the blood of Jesus is living and in heaven. The Bible says it's one of the residents of the court of heaven. And to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Egypt. The blood of Jesus is a powerful weapon of victory. Sometimes when I'm in deliverance and the demon doesn't want to go out and I've done everything, I know how to invoke the blood. Next week when we teach about pulling down strongholds, I will talk to you about how to break ancestral and territorial ties, territorial bondage. That you may be a man in Christ Jesus, you speak in tongues six hours every day, but because you are connected to that territory, they burn you dear. Therefore, there is a hold of the spirits ruling over that territory on your life. So even if you are in London and you, your home, your best place is built, the spirits, they can some, on the strength of that, they can lay some accusations on you. At that point, how do you fight? Except with, except with the blood. The blood of Jesus set me free. From sins and sorrows, the blood of Jesus set me free. Do you know that sometimes, sometimes, some very deadly afflictions, when you have prayed and prayer is not working, just take the communion. Sometimes. I'm giving you spiritual intelligence this night. When you have prayed over a deadly sickness or affliction and it's not working, Bless the communion. Or allow somebody to bless the communion for you and take it. Go and sleep. The blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. It's the blood that you use to silence the accusations of the kingdom of darkness over your family. It's the blood of Jesus that you use to silence and to counter the warfare of the enemy over you in the heavenlies. The blood and finally number four the force and power of prayer 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 somebody shout prayer the force and power of prayer prayer is a sacrifice to God a shield to your soul and a scourge to the devil let me say it again prayer is a sacrifice unto God a shield to your soul and a scourge to the devil one of the things that prayer does is that prayer gives life to the letters of the word of God that is in your mind. Huh? Do you understand what I just said? Let me repeat it again. Now, you know that the Bible says by stripes I'm healed, isn't it? When you begin to break into realms of prayer, you begin to interface with the energy and the life of God. What is happening by the ministry of prayer is that the life of God that will make that scripture a living reality in your life is released. It's like breaking the shell of a granite so that you can have access to the main seed. Do you know that prayer, you can, you can build prayer around your life like fortifications. Particularly when you pray in the spirit. The Bible says when you speak in other tongues, you are speaking the language of the spirit. You are speaking mysteries in the realm of the spirit. Those mysteries can be weapons. Those mysteries can be elements in the supernatural. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty true God. So it is when you begin to pray that you activate them. Is Amayando Kaikomaratakana Skubra. Now, some of you have watched this film they call Iron Man huh? by Marvel Comics. Iron Man. How many of you have watched that film? Iron Man. Now, Iron Man in himself is not a superhero. He's, a, he's not a, an alien. He's a human being. But if you allow him access to his suit, do you know that prayer can become like that suit? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not physical. 
you can't see them but when you begin to pray when you begin to stretch in the language of the spirit when you begin to speak languages of the throne room okay satan is in the second heavens with his angels but there is another place called the third heavens the heavens of god you say okay satan you block that place but i can go past your your fortress i can go past your blockade and interact with powers that come from a higher throne he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty let me explain that before we pray you know what that shadow means it's like a suit come one of you come wearing suit quickly we're about to pray come just come pull your suit and come don't worry i will not do any impartation all right let me explain something to you you will now see why jesus loved prayer even in the time of depression he prayed it was in prayer that they appeared to him and say you will die and he did not become depressed you know why prayer is a shield to the soul they told him yes you will go to jerusalem and die but the bible says who for the joy of what was set ahead of him endured the pain and despised the shame most christians when they go through cycles of trials and challenges they faint you know why they did not gather enough energy in the place of prayer he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the word shadow the word shadow there is the word covering meaning that there is a place where the most high dwells the bible calls it the secret place notice the bible says when we pray we should shut ourselves in the secret the secret place there was not just talking about a room to yourself no physically it is good to have a place and a time when you pray but the secrecy there goes beyond the physical the secrecy there goes into a revelation that you have about the state of communion you can have with God where it is just you and God in a height of his power. It says, pray in the secret place and he that dwells in the secret place. Psalms 31 verse 20 tells us that that secret place is where he hides men. He said, thou hides them in your secret place. So as you pray there, you are being covered, you are, you are hidden, you become invincible to the enemy. Somebody didn't hear that. As you begin to pray, you become invincible to the enemy. His radar cannot pick you again. Why? Because energy, you are generating energy that is beyond his database. Yet in Psalms 32 verse 7, the Bible says, you are my hiding place first of all he says pray in the secret place dwell in the secret place then he says you will hide them in the secret place of your presence but then as the revelation progresses he says you are that hiding place that secret place we are talking about is actually you that a man can come into union with god to a point where he is baptized and overshadowed and swallowed up by god in him we live in him we move in him we have our being so when you begin to chat into higher places of prayer god in his almightiness will swallow you up so you don't appear in the spirit as you when you appear it is god that is appearing what did the bible say the lord god in the midst of his people is what mighty shall abide under the shadow the word shadow there is covering so let's say he's walking around now and let me put this suit on him are you seeing him are you seeing his face what are you seeing the suit why because the suit has covered him so when the bible says if you dwell in the secret place if you send, spend time in prayers with god what he's saying is that you will come to a state of union with god where that part of god you are interfacing with will swallow you up and become your reality and then when you move around you now become that expression of god so when satan is looking for you he can't find you yet he's receiving bullets from nowhere you didn't understand what i just said when we read last week he said every battle of the warrior is with confused noise when you begin to chart your way in prayers and spiritual warfare like that in the spirit realm you disappear the witches they can't see you again in their mirror yet they are seeing bullets hitting them you know why 
because he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow that's the power of invisibility brothers and sisters you can sit down god bless you shadow the reason why my shadow is on this ground is because i'm blocking the light from this place so the light is shining on me and then my body is casting a shadow on the ground so my shadow is covering this ground because i am blocking the light he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the world covering shadow 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 he becomes your covering all of a sudden they they enchanted you to their mirror but they are not seeing anything but bullets are coming Bull, you know because when you begin to pray in tongues eh that's what they call i don't know how to put you know those days we used to play football and there's one slang we used to use anywhere belief face that means you can score anywhere and you just dribble anywhere when you begin to pray in the spirit that's that's you are fighting anywhere belief face it's like you hold these gpmgs and you begin to spray the bullet up and down the force and power of prayer give me 10 men of intense prayer that territory no matter how long it has been under darkness they will bring it down who told you that the principalities over ben bruno state are powerful like that you begin to pray you just start praying it may not happen in one day but just start praying Baruta you say but apostle when i pray i sleep it's okay to sleep when you pray but when you wake up keep praying because you did not stop praying when you fell asleep while you were praying you entered the spirit realm to check what your prayer was doing did you hear what i said Now you wake up from your sleep and you say, uh, I can't not lie. Continue there. Sleep and wake up. Pray. Pray into sleep. Wake up again. Pray like that. The Bible says Jesus was weak when he was praying. Do you know whether he slept? Yet the Bible says angels came and strengthened him while he was in prayers. It was because there was a prayer man called Elijah that Jezebel and the powers of Baal were brought down. God needs men of prayer, not men of talk. God needs ministers of fire. Ministers that will stay on the altar of prayer until witches know you. When last week did the spirit of darkness appear to you? When last did they appear to you and say, see, don't disturb us. Allow this place for us. When last? When last did you pray? Now let me encourage you. You set yourself 21 days to pray and fast against the work of darkness in your family. And three days while you were praying, three days into your prayer, they appeared to you and you are afraid. No, don't be afraid, my brother. Rejoice. That means your prayer has been hitting them. You say, but apostle, they came and pressed me. Ah, that is what we call reprisal attack now. If you were not hitting them, they will not come back. When you wake up from that attack, give God thanks. Continue the prayer. The Bible says Daniel prayed for 21 days. And the heavens opened. And the priest of Persia was cleared of the way. If we pray, revival can break out. If we pray, let me tell you the truth. This ministry was bettered by prayers, not ambition. I was minding my business as a keyboardist. But every night we'll go to the ground and pray. Every night we'll pray. Every night we'll pray. Every night we'll pray. Even during exams, we're praying. We're praying. Our friends were there looking for the next lady to escort to girls' hostel. But I understood that any man that needs to pay the price for an extraordinary destiny, one of it is prayer. And then when we're in final year, the prayer became two hours every night. When we pray 12 to 2, they will go, me, I'll start my own. Because I, I, re, I discovered that we were contending with spirits hanging in the atmosphere and when Balaam wanted to curse the children of Israel he raised seven altars why was one altar not enough so you can raise different altars with your prayers you can pray in the morning by 6 a.m that's one altar you raise you can pray by 12 noon you are raising another one you can pray by 6 p.m you raise another one in the days of warfare the three can fight for you 
Imagine when one altar discharges 1,000 angels. Halango Salimia. That's why to the principalities and the powers over this region. I know that anytime a man tries to rise in this region, they come to challenge you, frustrate you, and send you out. But let me tell them, I've been here for four years. And I'll be here till Jesus say move. Huh? Ah, prayer does a lot, my brothers and sisters. Prayer does a lot. You just start praying. You just start raising that momentum. One week, two weeks, three months. The first thing that will happen is you will begin to like prayer. That's the first thing to ha that will happen to you. Until you start enjoying prayer, you have not started praying. It will change you to like it first. And then in the bus you are praying. In the office you are praying. You begin to speak in tongues. And then because you continue like that, you are always in the atmosphere of the spirit. A time will come where your vocabularies begin to change. And you know what God showed me one time in the season of spiritual warfare? God said every time your prayer language changes, your vocabulary changes, your weapons have become more advanced. Is This one is not in the Bible. I got it by express revelation. One of my mentors said there's something called capital letter tongues. Batoko balakatoa kakampaka. Riko vaika pendo tomia. Eskomela parakataka. I saw Satan fell like lightning from the heavens. And behold, I've given unto you power to tread upon the serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy and you are immune against them that means you can enter a spiritual warfare season and come out be victorious without any bullet why because you are protected for thou O lord art a shield for me my glory stand up let's pray in the next three minutes i want you to hold hands with somebody too too i want you to hold hands with somebody too too This is what we are going to do in three minutes. You are going to pray. And then as you pray, the Spirit of God will come on you. You will feel the Spirit of God come on you while you are praying. As soon as you feel that, begin to make decrees. Your decrees tonight will settle some demonic contentions in your finances. Some satanic contentions in your family. Some of you, your CV has been hidden in demonic covens. It has to be released. Some of you, your breakthrough that should have come to you in April has been hidden somewhere. You must break open that demonic storehouse and retrieve that which was released to you. In the next three minutes, can you open your mouth? Can be wild in the place of prayer. He has given you authority and power. He has given you authority and power. As you pray, that power is being released. As you pray, that power is being enforced. As you pray, that power is being discharged. It gives the hopes of darkness.
Hallelujah. Please, one more prayer. God just showed me something. Isaiah 44, verse 25. I just saw something now. We are going to pray. How many of you can sense victory in the atmosphere? How many of you can touch victory? Something will shift over your life tonight. Who frustrates the signs of babblers? And drives the finest man. Who turns wise men backward. And makes their knowledge foolishness. Any enchanter. Any diviner. Any native doctor. Any witch. Any wizard. That has been against your family. Against your life. Against your destiny. Today there is power available. Hey. To drive them into hey. madness. Hey. Open your mouth and turn hey. the scripture hey. to prayer. We are out of time. We have to close here. Please lift your hands. You reign. You reign. Elohim. You reign. You reign. You reign. Elohim. You reign. One more time. You reign.
Lift your hands. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Father, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic anointing. Anyone here under the sound of my voice that has been oppressed, harassed, enslaved by demon spirit, I see the power of God moving from the left to the right. I come with the role of a higher priesthood and I command those demons take your hands off their life and come out of them now. 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 Any spirit sponsoring any form of addiction, any form of addiction, habits that you cannot break free from, I send the fire of God right now. I separate you from that spirit and I command those spirits be casted out into the outer darkness. Out of this territory now. Out, help them, help them, help them. Out of this territory now. Spirits that possess families and bloodlines, certain limitations. He said, I saw four horns. He said, These are the horns that lifted up themselves over Judah so that no one will lift them up or lift themselves up. I've come as a carpet sent by God and I bring judgment against those spirits. Listen, I speak by fire. And by the elements of the supernatural, I judge your spirit in your father's house. I judge your spirit in your mother's house. And I command them, go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Every serpentine spirit, every spirit of Leviathan operating in any life here, through any form, operating in their dreams, operating in their visions in an apakatokotakapata lashkaparakata I demand let the sword of the Lord's judgment that comes with fire let it come on that spirit right now I declare be cut off and be destroyed now I'm seeing a snake I'm seeing a large snake moving. And in the name of Jesus, I challenge that spirit. I set fire on you right now. I command deliverance by fire. By fire. By fire. By fire. By fire. My God, I'm seeing all kinds of animalistic spirits here. Lord, I speak. In the name of Jesus, any chain, any yoke of darkness held or that has held anybody here bound. At the count of three, I wanted to shout Jesus. And the Lord says, every chain of darkness will be broken. Now, I see the power of God. It will come on somebody. I see the person manifesting under the influence of this spirit. And the person will be holding their, his head or her head. He'll be touching the head. That's what I'm seeing. If you get the person, Osha, pick that person for me. There'll be more than one. But something is about to be broken now. And it shall come to pass in that day, in that day, in that day, in that day, that the body of the Assyrian shall be lifted off your shoulder and the yoke off your neck. Father, as they shout the name of Jesus, by whom all knees shall bow. I declare every chain, every limitation, every encroachment of darkness, I don't care how long it has been in their life or in their family, let it come down and let those spirits be sucked out of their life. By this shout of victory, at the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Chains be broken now. Yokes be broken. 
Chains be broken. Locks be broken. Oppression leaves. Oppression be over. I command the spirits. I command you out of their lives, out of their families, out of their finances, out of this territory. Now in the name of Jesus. By your blood, you crushed principality. Jesus, Jesus, bring them by your name. We established authority. Jesus, 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 the righteous. I thought I was going to pray this next week, but God is asking me to pray it now. Eyes closed everywhere. Every satanic blood covenant that has connected you to battles with the adversary whether your life or your family that has kept you under perpetual bondage I make demands for the blood of Jesus the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel and I command let those covenants be broken now Let those covenants be broken now. Let those covenants be broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I stretch my hands towards this daughter of yours. And in the name of Jesus, I command those spirits, take your hands and your hold of this family and this life. Let her go now. At the count of seven, let her go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Father, we give you praise. Blessed be your name forever. Wave your hands and give the Lord glory. Crucify, lay behind the soul. You live to die, rejected and alone, like a Lord, trampled on the ground. You took the fall. I'm, out, I'm about to make the altar call now. Son of me. ushers no movement anywhere just two minutes and we are done if you are here and you don't know jesus as your lord and your savior you want to make him lord over your life today you want to be sorry for your old lifestyle and your old ways and you want to accept him as your savior or perhaps you are here and you used to be born again and even on fire for god but you backslided before there's no need for me to preach a long sermon Wherever you are, I want you to walk down to the front very quick so that you can make peace with God. It is on the strength of salvation that your deliverance stands a chance to be perfected. He shed his blood and he died for your sins that you will be holy unto God and delivered from the yokes of the enemy. Wherever you are, you want to say yes to Jesus, please come to the front very quickly before we close. While that is happening, there are three people that God is showing me right now as you stand. The Spirit of God is walking on you right now and He's setting you free from addictions. Don't be embarrassed. But the power of God is on you right now and He's breaking every addiction in your life. He's breaking addiction. I'm seeing three of you right now. And I command those habits to be broken off your life. If you are one of them, you can just come out and so that we can... You surrender your life to Jesus and become new again. Father, we thank you. 
Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We bless you. Please come in the next 10 seconds. We'll close this. If you are here, you want to surrender to the Lord Jesus. Or you want to rededicate your life afresh. Wherever you are, from the front to the very back. Please come to the front quickly so that we can pray for you. I just have 10 to 15 seconds to finish that quickly before we close. Lord, we thank you for deliverances. We thank you because battles are over. And the victory is sure for your children. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Please come. Please come quickly. If you need to surrender to the Lord Jesus, please come quickly. I think we can just give them a big God bless you as they come. Come with your habit, your addiction. Come with your habit. Come and lay it at his feet. Let it be broken. Who forgiveth your iniquities and heals your transgression. Those of you in front, please put your right hand on your chest. I'll pray with you quickly. If you need to join them right now, please join them quickly before we are done with the prayers and if you are online following and you want to make this decision please follow as i lead them to pray this prayer i'm seeing somebody here and i'm seeing a secret in your finger I'm, I'm seeing the secret within your finger and i see the lord setting you free from the addiction of smoking you are here you are not online you are here and god is setting you free from the addiction of smoking and I command, let that power be broken of your life. In the name of Jesus. Those of you in front, repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my sins. I believe that you died and rose again. That I'll be saved. And today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I receive eternal life. Thank you for saving me in jesus name father according to the confession of their mouth and the faith in their heart i declare that their sins are forgiven and i declare that they are new creatures in christ jesus let the power of sin satan hell death and the grave be broken of their life and may they serve you with godly faith.